Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, earlier in the day, I had the opportunity to speak with the British MP from the Conservative Party, Bob Blackman, and Bob Blackman pulls no punches. Straightforward questions and sharp, precise, succinct answers from Bob Blackman who tore apart the BBC, called this entire docu-series a hatchet job. Coincidentally, within half an hour of this interview being played out live in the morning here at CNN News 18, the IT survey happened at the BBC offices in our country. Joining us live is Mr. Robert John Blackman, Conservative MP in the British Parliament, uh, popularly known as Bob Blackman. He's uh, very, very uh, vocal about his points of view and he is here currently in Bharat. So, Bob, uh, namaste and welcome to Bharat. Namaskar and uh, pleasure to be here once again. First up is this entire issue of the BBC documentary, which we've called a hatchet job. Well, it was a hatchet job and I'm afraid it was uh, uh, poor journalism, badly researched, um, badly sought and, and cast smears against Prime Minister Narendra Modi, which are completely unjustified. Um, it almost sought to demonstrate that uh, the Indian judicial system could not be trusted. And I'm afraid, you know, the judicial system in India uh, obviously is based on the, the British system, completely separate from politics. It's completely independent and of course uh, that investigated the Gujarat riots of, of uh, 2002 and completely exonerated Prime Minister Modi um, and in, indeed in the same documentary they had snippets of Prime Minister Mo Narendra Modi at the time calling for calm trying to prevent the riot to, to calm the situation down yet the aspersions were that somehow shape or form he was encouraging them I mean, a complete, uh, completely out outrageous um, slurs against uh, the Indian Prime Minister. Uh, and then, of course, it went on in the second programme to make even more slurs against the Indian government uh, and to try and represent India as being a non-secular country. I mean, as we know, um, India embraces all religions, uh, people from all backgrounds. Uh, and therefore, I'm afraid it gave a, 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 a very poor picture of India and completely unjustified in my experience. The British media has widely reported uh, overt influence of Chinese state-sponsored elements in the BBC. And this is a two-way street, with BBC's investments in China increasing at a time when BBC journalists had to flee Beijing. Is that a cause for concern? Mm. Well, there is a cause for concern. We've got a number of us are very concerned about Chinese influence, not just in, in the United Kingdom, but across the world. Uh, I take a view that China is trying to encircle India. Um, it already has obviously a strong representation in Sri Lanka with uh, uh, the, the deep sea port and the international airport. Um, it's got strong representation obviously in, uh, in Pakistan and in, now in East Africa and increasingly in South America as well. Um, so we've got to be wary of, of Chinese influence and indeed the Chinese in, um, ability to suppress its minorities um, is an absolute disgrace. Um, we called that out in Parliament, in fact, just, uh, just this last week when we were calling for the governor of, of uh, the province where the Uyghur Muslims have been oppressed uh, to be sanctioned by the British government. And uh, we stand together with the Indian government to say, look, we do not want Chinese influence either in our politics or increasing Chinese influence across the world. Do you believe there is increasing Chinese influence which is also affecting uh, the United Kingdom, its policies and politics? Yes, because well, not so much the politics. I mean, we've had the circumstances of uh, protesters um, uh, of, of Chinese origin being dragged into the Chinese embassy and beaten up. Uh, and therefore, uh, we've called on um, the, the, the government, the UK government, to expel all those responsible. I mean, it's, a, it's completely unacceptable behaviour uh, for that to happen. Uh, we have a, have a, a long-standing history of, of allowing peaceful protest, as you do in India, uh, and that's quite right too. People should be enabled to protest as long as it's peaceful uh, and it's not uh, threatening other people. Uh, I've prayed that Chinese influence has sought to come in and we are removing Chinese products 
from our telecommunication systems, we're removing Chinese influence over our power stations, uh, and we're trying to um, re remove reliance on Chinese uh, technology uh, at all aspects because we can't trust them uh, for what they do to, to our country. And I would, I would caution, uh, obviously, the same circumstances in India. In fact, it's come with closed circuit uh, television cameras, security cameras where uh, the British government has taken steps to ensure that all Chinese footprint is removed. Now, is that a conscious decision? Do you support it? Absolutely. Yes, I do. I called this out a very long time ago. My, my background is uh, in co telecommunications, communica data communications uh, and IT. Uh, and I, I, when I, I was calling this out when we were considering um, whether we continue to use Huawei in our telecommunications infrastructure. Um, I pointed out that there are alternative suppliers that we could use which would not place a security risk in the United Kingdom. Uh, I'm pleased to say that now um, strong steps are being taken to actually remove all that Chinese technology because it can be used to spy uh, on, on, on the UK in a serious manner. And of course we've seen over the just, just the past uh, couple of weeks mm. uh, how spy balloons have been sh had to be shot yeah. down by the United States and Canada. Um, and therefore we, we know that, that that's another form of, of uh, basically the Chinese snooping on other, other countries. But beyond security, is the UK very consciously looking beyond China to reduce its dependence on Chinese products? And is India an alternative? Yes, indeed. Yeah, no, I think you know uh, we we would, frankly, I would I'd rather say we'd rather use Indian products than uh, Chinese products. But if India and the UK want to work together, and you believe that both nations can uh, help each other, then when narratives like this are pushed by the BBC and claims are made that a huge amount of taxpayers' money also goes towards funding the BBC or backing the BBC, then does the BBC represent state policy? Does the BBC represent the government's point of view? How do you solve that? No, I think, I think we should be abundantly clear on this. We have to be abundantly clear on this. The BBC does not represent uh, the views of the British government. Um, and indeed, uh, I asked specifically the uh, Foreign Secretary, uh, the UK Foreign Secretary, in Parliament about this, and he made clear um, that obviously the BBC are free to, to choose to publish whatever they, they wish and to broadcast whatever they wish, but that did not represent the views of the British government. The British government regard India uh, as a long-standing ally and friend, and we should be treating India in such such a way. And I would say to all your viewers, um, uh, be very careful what is broadcast on the BBC. It is, in this particular case, as I say, it was very poorly researched. It was an in, in innuendo um, behind it and an anti-India bias, which is unacceptable, <clears throat> particularly from the perspective of we have a very large Indian diaspora in the United Kingdom um, and all of them would be, um, I think, rightly enraged by the way that the BBC put this program on. We should be clear this program was produced by an outside company, uh, had an editor from the BBC uh, engaged in, in, in obviously the program, and then the BBC sh chose to show it. Um, we've condemned it, and I think many, many people from the diaspora in the UK have condemned it as well. The BBC obviously operates under a charter, um, as you quite rightly say, everyone has to pay their license fee in the United Kingdom which then funds the BBC, and I think they have a duty then, uh, and a duty of care to make sure that if they're broadcasting programmes like this, that they make sure that it's not only accurate, uh, but, but they do not literally broadcast fake news. Well, there has also been allegations of uh, Richard Sharp's you know, association with Boris Johnson, a certain level of quid pro quo, which Boris Johnson himself has refuted these charges, but does that then you know, put the entire credibility of the BBC and the workings of the BBC uh, under cloud? I think the, the, the BBC has a, a long-standing history of independent journalism uh, and I think on this particular case um, they, they failed in their duty in, uh, to be properly independent uh, and to have proper research. I mean they will claim to say 
that they gave um, the Indian government the right to reply and, uh, and that, uh, that Prime Minister Narendra Modi chose not to um, actually grant this, this uh, documentary or so-called documentary, I would call it propaganda uh, exercise um, to, to be anti-India. Um, but, but frankly, um, I, I don't blame them for not responding because it would have, it would have suggested that in somehow, shape or form, this programme was balanced and it wasn't balanced at all. Um, and I think uh, it's a great shame because it casts doubt and indeed, as, as you are saying, uh, your, your uh, viewers will be saying, my goodness me, how could the government of the United Kingdom allow this to happen? Well, it's not the government that controls the BBC. Um, uh, and often the BBC is very critical of the UK government as well. We understand that. And that's part and parcel of the independence of journalism. But I think it's more important that we look at responsible journalism rather than trying to control it.